We're going to do uh, basically the first question of our practice problem, which involves uh, looking at placing strain gauges and uh, seeing where we can measure strain uh, in these complex stress states. So one of the quick ways that we could kind of solve this problem uh, and the way you want to generally kind of start is uh, if you look below uh, ahead of time, you're going to kind of see about quarter bridge, half bridge, full bridge. So we just want to see before we even get to kind of this next step of the problem, uh, let's just kind of draw out all the different configurations and look at the strains that we have. So let's go ahead and draw something a little bit like this. So I'm going to say that I have a strain gauge A here. I have a strain gauge on the back in the same configuration C. I have a strain gauge oriented like this in B. And then I also have one on the back that's oriented like this. I'm going to call this one D. So now if I look at Let's look at the strain in our A branch. So I'm going to call my coordinate system like this, 1, 2. So I have positive sigma 1, 1, negative compression there, and the bending is going kind of out of the page in this direction. So let's look at A. So let's always be consistent. Let's start with the uh, 1, 1 direction. So if I'm pulling, the wires are like this. If I'm pulling in this direction, it is going to shrink, right? Pulling here, the material is going to uh, basically shrink in this direction is going to shrink due to the Poisson's ratio times the strain in 1, 1. In 2, 2, we just have compression. The wires are shrinking, so minus strain in 2, 2. Uh, the bending, however, because we're pulling out of the board right here, or bending it out, this material is going to lengthen like this. So we're going to have positive bending and positive thermal strain as well. Let's look at what's happening in B. In B, we have positive strain in 1, 1. We have it squishing down. Uh, our material here, that's going to cause it to elongate in the lateral direction, so positive Poisson's ratio from the strain of 2, 2. Bending, however, is negative, um, and it's because it's going to lengthen the material like this, and the material is going to shrink, so we're going to have, uh, actually, uh, so we're going to pull the material out like this, it is going to shrink, and so we're going to have a, uh, basically a negative bending component right there. So minus nu, Poisson's bending because it's going to elongate there, shrink in the other direction, and then our temperature as well. For C, the, uh, it's going to be the same exact um, kind of coordinates for our 1, 1, and 2, 2 strain. So you're just going to see that repeat. So minus 1, 2. That's not affected by top or bottom, so that's going to be consistent. But now when we think about the bending, so now we are, uh, as we bend in this direction here, we elongate on the top, we are going to shrink, shrink this on the bottom, so it's going to have this negative bending uh, strain bending plus your temperature. And then for D, uh, again, same thing. These, this is consistent with B, so we're going to have the strain in the 1, 1 here, plus new strain 2, 2. Now here's where it gets a little bit, you know, again, thinking about it. So we here, we are pulling up on this direction. Here, we're actually compressing because it's on the bottom. So whereas here, we're kind of pulling on the top and then shrinking this direction. Here, we're compressing here, so it's going to elongate in this direction. So we're going to have this positive um, Poisson's ratio bend plus temperature. That's it. So let's go ahead. These are all the different configurations that you can have. So I'd always suggest starting with this first, drawing your coordinate system, listing out all the strains. Now let's see if we can kind of answer this problem. So it says using a quarter bridge configuration to determine a configuration that compensates for bending. So compensates means basically eliminates. So... If we can only use a quarter bridge configuration, that means one strain gauge, no stunt dummy gauges. Are there any configurations here that don't have bending in it? No. So it's impossible. We cannot um, use any configuration there. But when we have a quarter bridge configuration, we know that our bridge constant, K, is equal to A over B, where this is equal to minus 2, minus 3, plus 4, over E1. So if we only have uh, a single um, a single strain gauge in our configuration, we just have our k is always going to be equal to 1. So that's just a kind of a quick answer there. So for A, it's not possible. We can't uh, basically utilize this configuration. Let's look at B asked, use a half bridge configuration. So we have two strain gauges that compensates for bending. Um, so let's see and calculate the bridge constant. So let's see if we can do this one here. So is there any configuration here where we can arrange this A and B? where, or, or A, B, C, or D, where we could kind of eliminate bending. Well, let's kind of draw out, let's see, 
where can I add? So let's just kind of circle and highlight. Here's all my bending components. Is there any way that we could kind of eliminate or use a half bridge configuration to eliminate these this uh, uh, to eliminate bending? Well, yeah, right. We see here that this is a positive bending, this is a negative bending. So I could have um, basically I could set my a equal to my first uh, bridge. So a is equal to one. So if I have a, we could actually draw it out here. So I have, if I have A as 1, and if I have C, which is in the back, as my 4, in this configuration, in this loading state here, my E sub 1 plus E sub 4, so this right here plus this, is going to eliminate my bending. So that's an answer. You could also have it where your B is equal to the, um, we could also kind of write another configuration here. So I could also have this and this. That can also eliminate, because again, you're just adding those components there. So that is possible. And then again, if you add those up, you can calculate your bridge constant. Um, so let's do it for this configuration. So for the one and four, so where my A is equal to one. So I have, let's kind of draw it out here. So my A is equal to one, my C is equal to four. So if I add those, I'm going to get basically, uh, here we go, adding those up, <laughs> uh, E sub 1, or actually, excuse me, so my E sub 1 minus E sub 2 minus E sub 3, excuse me, here. So if I erase this here, all I'm going to have, if, the, if I add those together, my E sub 1 plus E sub 4 is going to be equal to minus to your new e sub one, one minus two, e sub two two. The bending is canceled, and then normal strains add, and then that's all divided by e sub one. So that would be your bridge constant uh, there. But again, that's the main configuration that will eliminate bending. Now let's see the next problem. So here it's asking using a full bridge configuration this time. Figure out um, a configuration that eliminates all non-bending components. So getting rid of epsilon 1, 1 and epsilon 2, 2. So let's again look back up here. What's a configuration here using all four of these? It's going to eliminate all of my E sub 1s, E sub 2s. Or, uh, it's going to eliminate all these and all of these. Well, you're going to have to kind of do a little bit of math here. But if you arrange, uh, let's look at this configuration right here. So if you arrange the strain gauges like this, let's say that I have, I'm going to draw these configurations. And then this is on the back, oriented like this. So let's say I have my A as my one strain gauge, my C as my two. If I put my B in the three and my D in the four, Let's see what that uh, turns out to be. So if I add all those together, epsilon 1, this epsilon 2, this epsilon 3, this epsilon sub 4. So if I write those out, so minus nu E11 minus E22 plus EB plus ET. Now it's going to be uh, minus C, so it's going to be plus, plus V. E sub 1 plus E sub 2 plus E sub B minus E sub T. And then we're going to do minus 3, which is our B. So minus, <laughs> this is going to be a little messy. So minus E sub 1. And then me, minus new E sub 2 plus new B minus ET and then plus our D, so it's just plus one one plus new E sub two plus new E sub B plus E sub T. So now let's see what cancels out. So we see here and here cancels, here and here cancels. The B's add. This is minus, this is minus, but this is plus. So we are going to kind of get those. Uh, Actually, this should be a plus up here, excuse me. 
minus e sub b plus. So this plus and this minus, those cancel, those temperatures. Here, this plus, this minus cancels. We know that this and this cancel. Also, that minus propagates here and here. Let me get rid of that k equal to 1. And voila, we're left with an expression that is just left in terms. So my e sub 1 minus e sub 2 minus e sub 3 plus e sub 4 is equal to 2 eb that, plus new uh, eb. That's it. So that's our total divided by e sub 1, which we've kind of defined there, which was our, and again, initially our a. So uh, that's it. So that satisfies that problem's requirement. So we've solved for the second one as well. Um, it is possible. And then finally, we're just asked, what is the kind of configuration here? Well, we already know all the strain uh, configurations here. E sub 1 was, again, or originally our kind of uh, D. So we know the strain. And you can just look at this from uh, the previous problem. We've already calculated that. So plus new E sub B plus E sub 1, 1 plus new E sub 2, 2 plus E sub T. E sub 2 is equal to minus E sub B minus strain in 2, 2 minus new strain 1, 1 plus E sub T. You add those together to kind of uh, show this. So our total strain can be e sub 1 minus E sub 2. So you add that together, you get this uh, basically E sub B of 1 plus nu plus uh, epsilon 1, 1, 1 plus nu, and then plus uh, E sub 2. 1 plus mu, plus, or excuse me, and the, the ETs cancel out. So, and you leave that over epsilon sub 1. So, this is not true that that's that bridge constant. Pretty close, um, uh, if, as long as you assume that E sub T is not, um, is very small. But, again, you could just leave it in this form. You can make that assumption. So, uh, it kind of depends on how you want to justify this problem. So, yeah, that's it. So, we'll move on to the next problem uh, in the next video. We'll kind of continue on with this practice for our exam three. Thanks. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.